had a chance. Now, the Aces spin 5, 13 inch 2 and 1 is Aces play at, I wouldn't say budget, I would say mid range 2 in 1 device because it is very affordable. I've seen it as low as 731 US. I'll leave links in the description. Now, 750 pounds, around 800 euros. And here in Australia, I've seen it as low as $1,100. So it is an affordable 2 in 1. But even though it's affordable, it comes packed with the latest processors. We're talking eighth generation i7-8550U in this unit. That's a 15 watt quad core CPU. This model comes with eight gigabytes of RAM. You can get up to 16. Intel HD graphics, a 13.3 inch full HD touch display, of course being a two in one, and a 512 gigabyte SSD, which is a SATA SSD. So it's not an NVMe drive. Now, even though this is affordable, it is very premium. It has a metal build, some sort of alloy, beautiful finish on the top, a checkered finish on the top lid there. It really looks classy. It's built solid and it's pretty thin and light. I mean, it won't be the thinnest and lightest two in one in this class, but at 3.48 pounds, 1.58 kilos, and 15.9 millimeters thick, it is a nice and thin premium laptop without the premium price. Now, I have made a video on the Inspiron 7000 two in one. I guess this would compete with it. Now, if I guess I was gonna compare the two, they're pretty similar. There's not much between them, except this one has far better battery life and it's cheaper. So that's important to me. I would probably go with this one. And it has pretty much all the ports you want. On the left-hand side, two times USB 3s, a USB-C, it's not Thunderbolt 3, it's just USB-C has a HDMI port full size. Right hand side, you have the volume rocker, headphone jack, SD card slot, and another USB and the power button. So plenty of ports. The only thing missing here is probably Thunderbolt 3. On these sort of mid-range devices, it's not uncommon for them not to have Thunderbolt 3. Now, of course, if you haven't checked out my which laptop to buy in 2018 video, you want to check that out. And basically what it comes down to, if you buy a laptop, you definitely want an eighth generation Intel CPU. They make a huge difference. Now, the true harmony sound on this Dolby Audio, it's not the greatest sound I've ever heard. I'd say it's very serviceable. It can sound a little bit tinny, but it doesn't distort. Obviously, this being a two-in-one, you can use it in tent mode, presentation mode, tablet mode, etc. But the actual audio experience is good in every one of those scenarios. Whereas some may only sound good in laptop mode, this sounds good in tent mode or tablet mode as well. The keyboard is really good, backlit, nice amount of travel. It feels nice, it has a nice amount of feedback. To be perfectly frank, this keyboard is better than a lot of high-end keyboards. So I really do like the keyboard, especially for the price point. Trackpad, there's nothing really to complain about here. Nice tracking nice click to it gestures work well i'm not going to say it's top draw and the best trackpad you've ever used it's definitely certainly serviceable and above average some people have actually said the display is not that good i beg to differ this is a really cracking display 13.3 inch ips panel great view and angles multi-touch pen support it does come with a pen this was a review unit and it came with a pen box there was no pen inside but for what it's worth i have used one of these pens before and they are very decent they're not surface quality or say walk on quality but they are very decent for taking notes and doing a bit of art there it's a really nice bright vibrant crisp 1080p display and measured nearly 100% sRGBs and it's color accurate. So I really do like this display and it holds its own against some more expensive competitors. Now, one interesting thing was on the spec sheet, it says it has a 46 watt hour battery. But when I looked at the battery report, it said it had a 54 watt hour battery. That was its design capacity and actually held 51 watt hours of charge. Now the battery life is really good on this compared to its competitors excellent battery life the eighth generation intel cpu really makes a difference here they are really power efficient and we're talking you know seven hours battery life just your general usage word excel email web surfing youtube etc and on just the video rundown test i could get over 10 hours battery life so really good battery life the performance these eighth generation 15 watt cpus are fantastic quad core so that's why you need the eighth generation you don't want the seventh generation ultrabooks you want the eighth generation ultrabook cpus because you get an extra two cores this does not throttle it can sustain all core burst in the mid two gigahertz so it doesn't throttle you get maximum performance there performance is great so there's not really much you can upgrade in here you can upgrade the ssd 
that's about it. Buy the best specs in your budget because you will eventually grow into that and it will last you a long time, this device, because these eighth generation quad cores won't be outdated in two or three years. They'll still be good in five years in terms of performance. So in conclusion, this would have to be one of the best, if not the best, mid-range two-in-one you can get. Great build quality, great display, great battery life, get the performance of the eighth generation quad cores and it has pretty much every port you'll need. My minor gripes with this would be the fan is on at idle sometimes. I don't know why. It's not particularly loud. It doesn't get particularly hot, this machine. But I don't know why at idle the fan would be audible. Certainly, most of the time it's not audible, but sometimes it just kicks in for no reason. And hopefully they'll be able to fix that up with a firmware upgrade. And I would like to see a Thunderbolt 3 port here, but as I said, it's not uncommon not to have that. So a great device. If you liked this review, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new around here, why not subscribe? And until next time, guys, tally ho.